Um, all right, we'll get kicked off. Um, so my presentation today is on Purge the Gap, automating content delivery and network purging for GovCMS. Okay, so my talk, we'll be talking about uh, automating content delivery network purging with GovCMS um, and the problem that we needed to solve um, and the discovery process that took place uh, in order to enable our customers to automate the purging of content from the GovCMS CDN. The options and, um, and the analysis process to find the best fit solution uh, and the solution that was implemented in the service delivery process. Uh, and, and finally, the benefits that were realized as part of the whole bit of work. Uh, about me, uh, so I'm the Cloud Infrastructure Manager in the Security Operations team uh, within Online Services Branch at the Department of Finance. It's a bit of a mouthful, but <laughs> don't put it on a business card. Uh, my job, I look after the web application firewall rules, uh, including the content delivery network rules. So that, that ranges from um, setting up uh, optimal cache uh, rules for uh, serving uh, cache content to with our uh, sites and, and managing, uh, ensuring that the, um, the web application firewall also fit for purpose and that uh, mitigate all kind of, uh, cyber security risks. Uh, we do, I do digital certificate management, looking at encryption and making sure that uh, strong and up-to-date ciphers are used as part of that certificate management. Um, I also investigate security incidents uh, and, uh, and, and uh, help to implement uh, incident mit uh, mitigation and management strategies. Um, I look at process improvement uh, and how service delivery can be optimised with the work that I do. I offer uh, also do advice and technical support in my role. About GovCMS, uh, GovCMS is a content management and web hosting solution for the Australian government, um, uh, making it easier for agencies to create modern, affordable, responsive websites to better connect with government and people. GovCMS works in partnership with Salsa Digital uh, and Amazy to provide the platform offering. We host sites uh, for all three levels of government, local, state, and federal. Uh, and it's GovCMS is turning seven this year. Um, so I've actually been with uh, GovCMS since the start of GovCMS and it's seen a lot of growth over that seven years. Um, at the moment, at a glance, uh, so we have 348 live sites, uh, 57 in development, and, organize, and 105 organisations that have signed up to use GovCMS. Uh, GovCMS Content Delivery Network. Uh, GovCMS CDN and WAF services are provided by Akamai. Uh, Akamai is one of the world's largest distributed computing, uh, computing platforms. Uh, Akamai operates a network of servers worldwide. Um, it, this network is optimised for performance delivery um, and they use a product called ShoreRoute, uh, which helps people connect to a node that um, will serve content uh, to them in, in, at the fastest rate. Oh, and, uh, DOS mitigation and other security services. Uh, they do bot management, um, client reputation, and uh, they've got a rich library of API, which I can, will show you soon. So the problem, what were we trying to do? Um, so the community was asking for a way to purge content themselves from the content delivery network. Uh, seems like an easy problem to solve, <laughs> you would think. Just let's give people the, the option of doing that. So, um, and so we needed to make it uh, easy and secure and fast. Uh, we needed to remove the support overhead for people, um, that being support people raising support requests to click uh, uh, content from the CDN, and to make the option available 24 hours, seven days a week. What were the options? So what do we do? So we had a look, we had a bit of a discovery process. We sat down and we thought, well, how can we solve this problem? Um, so it was always going to involve use, the use of Akamai's API library, uh, which is uh, to purge content. 
So Akamai uses a thing called a, an API purge key. And so we thought the first option, let's, give, let's create a master key, just give it out to everybody. Off you go, problem solved. They can just integrate it into their site and away you go. Second one, everyone gets a key. 300 sites, no worries. You get a key, you get a key, you get a key. Um, dedicated, serve purchase, uh, uh, dedicated purge service. Uh, we have a service that manages the purging of the content from CDN. Option one. <laughs> right, it's so the advantage of it. So everyone gets the key. I mean, sorry, the, the master key option. So the option here to generate a key that can purge all host names that are on the GovCMS platform. Kind of see the problem there with that sort of approach. Um, kind of some security issues around that. It's easy to manage. Just go, here you go, here's a key. Go away, just use it. Um, gives us a bit of, gives us clear visibility. We know there's one key out there. We know that what it's doing. Uh, we can see the host names that it's purging. You can see the content that's purging. Um, disadvantages. Um, it's probably the security is the biggest issue with this. You're handing out this key that's got ultimate power to do all this stuff. And, uh, and you've got no way of controlling it. You've got no wrapper around it. You don't know what trust what, what's happening with it. Um, and uh, the key expiration. So you can put some controls around it, say, well, the key expires, but then you've got to hand it another one out. And how do you do that? So we quickly said, well, this is not probably the best optimal thing to do. Option two, everyone gets the key. Everyone, you know. So we thought, well, you know, this could work. You know, we could just generate, you know, the API, just generate keys and just get them distributed and do all that. A bit of overhead with doing that. But yeah, it's a feasible option. You could do that. Um, limits the damage. Um, so one key goes to one site. Um, they can only purge content for that site. Now um, gives us clear reportability. We know that that key is doing that bit of work. Um, so that's good. Um, disadvantages, again, security and control. We don't know what's happening with those keys. We don't know how they're being used. Um, it, we're just blindly trusting people to um, put it in a safe place and it's not gonna get misused or handed out to someone. Um, renewal and expiration. Renewing um, and expiring three or well, 300 keys is kind of, it's a big job um, and handing them all out. Uh, you could automate it. It's probably not the best way of doing it. So we got to option three, purge service. Um, let's have a dedicated service for where we control the purge key. Purges all the sites, um, clears the cache from uh, for all those sites, gives us improved reporting. We know which um, we know what sites are being purged, um, and the renewal and exp expiration process is dead easy. Just expire the key, add a new one to the service. Disadvantage: security control. Now, by this I mean. You have to get a service accredited. You have to get it assessed to see if there's any sort of security vulnerabilities or holes in the service, uh, and uh, before you turn it on and get interim approval to operate. Um, and then managing um, management expectations with the service. What's the SLA around that? Um, and then the initial investment costs. So setting up the service is obviously going to be a cost with setting that up and uh, and getting it up and running and and obviously testing and taking through its development life cycle. Um, so acceptance criteria. So what, what must the purge service do? So this is what we first defined. We said, well, must support uh, secure automated purging for all published content updates. Enforce rules that limit content purging requests to a host name, a single host name, um, that, are, uh, that is making that, that purge request. Enforce rules that limit the number of API requests to be within the global API limits defined by Akamai. So they have a, with an API, you've got a limit that you can you can throw at it. It's a pretty high limit, but um, there is a limit. Uh, support individual on-demand purge requests for URLs. So give people the post the option of doing their own purges through a user-friendly interface. Support individual on-demand purge requests, yeah, user-friendly interface uh, that um, notifies an authenticated user of the success or failure of a purge request. Uh, support the secure storage of the Akamai Purge Key um, and support functional capability with uh, Drupal 8 and Drupal 9, soon to be Drupal 10. <laughs> um, demonstration. So uh, I'm just going to have to bear with me a bit here. So uh, I did record a demonstration, but I'll, I'll try and do it live because I, I figure that's the best way to, 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 to show you guys. Um, 
So this was not the site. Um, let's get rid of that one. So, all right. So, oh, sorry. Firstly, this is the um, Acme API li uh, library. It's pretty rich. Most of their products have a complementing API. Um, the Purge um, API. Um, it's pretty. It's, it's got a lot of documentation around it. Um, tells you. Um, how to do a fast API purge, CLI purge, um, and then um, just yeah, some guidance around all that sort of stuff. Um, uh, purge contenting by cache tags, um, URL, CP, CP codes. CP codes are for like the whole um, like site. If you that's kind of a dangerous thing if you want to purge a whole site. Um, yeah, but that's that's more or less the purge stuff. I think. Uh, yeah, the API, so it's got a bit about the API. But yeah, if you want to go in and read out, it's really interesting stuff. It talks about the limits as well in there. Um, as far as the demonstration, so uh, this is just a test site that was spun up um, that, that um, goes through our CDN. Um, so if I log into that, um, you can um, have a look. So the, the interface that we've got here um, under configuration, we've got a, it's a Gov, custom GovCMS module that um, allows people to provide a list of URL paths to purge content from the CDN. So this gives them the power to do that. Um, I should make the distinction at this point that there is the option of purging, con uh, so automated purging occurs when content updates are, are being made. So that purges, so in the background when you're updating content, uh, a request is sent to the purge service and it's purging these cache tags uh, from Akamai. Um, for, for this example, I'll just show you um, what we've done here. So, like, th this is just some dummy files. So, if I copy like the first one, <coughs> can I go back? Yeah, put in, put it in here. Um, then we purge that. Um, so you get so it puts it in the queue and it's sent off and it and it gets purged from the CDN. Um, wow, <laughs> you know, um, but um, you know, in the background, there's a bit of work going on there, um, and so the, uh, um, and so we've got some rules as well in here. So if you were to put your site name in here, like um, um, uh, put that. In. Oops, just too many T's. And try and purge that just the whole site. It's not going to do it because it's not a, it's not a file path. You don't. There's some guidance here on what what can be purged. We've also got limits on the number of things that you can purge. So um, I did have a list of 200 things in here. So just to give you, we kind of set a limit at 200. Um, um, let me go back. Chuck that in there. So there's 200 odd files there. Um, it's kind of hit the error. So you know, there's over 200 paths here. You can't do that. Um, configure. Oh, sorry. Um, you can configure the module with permissions. So you can say who's got allowed, who's allowed to sort of touch this thing um, or purge. Like um, so, content authors, editors, or administrators. Um, so uh, I wouldn't give it to an anonymous user, <laughs> um, but. Uh, so that's basically the file purging aspect of it. Um, so we can actually have visibility of that purging. Um, so we've got, um, this is open search dashboard of the purge service as it's work working. So we've re it's reading the log files of the purge service and um, I'll see if we can find the one that I just did then um, by through a filter. Name. Name. Uh, 
Oh, sorry. Um, that should get it. Um, it's in the last 24 hours, 15 minutes. Uh, if you lost 15 minutes. Oh, sorry, it's thinking. Maybe that's... Take it off. Oh. Because... <coughs> so yeah, so you, this you can see this this is um, this project um, ACC two. Um, my I don't know my mic should be in here somewhere. You know, it's got um, you can see the um, tags that are being queued uh, for purging, um, and. We look, yeah, have a graph of how that's scaling and if there's any sort of um, and how if that's hitting the, hitting the sort of limits of that th threshold. Um, so it's a basic view of the service working. I mean, I, I can't really. I mean, we've got ad uh, the back end um, view of how it's ha um, performing the um, purge service. So there's an admin interface that looks. Like this, so we've got how many how many uh, jobs were being purged? Um, the service is active um, in the queue, and if there's any sort of errors, uh, some metrics and uh, branches. Um, here's a list of the um, purge jobs, um, and in the queue, uh, so you can see they're not taking very long. Um, and yeah, and this is just another snapshot. So, uh, one of the screen that I was showing you before, just where they're hitting these purge queues are just hitting the number of the limits with the number of cache tags that are allowed in the purge. So they just get broken up and then just separated into the queue. Um, okay, so the service delivery. How did we how do we give this to people? So, um, rolling start model was the way we decided to go instead of the big bang approach. Um, so rolling start. Um, like much like I don't know the Bathurst Grand Prix where um, you start under wet weather conditions under a safety car you start off slow and develop uh, momentum um, so we just start off with a slow number of slides to see how things were scaling and if any cal if we needed to calibrate the service um, then we looked at logical groupings of how we delivered it to to the all these sites so uh, this namely sort of to minimize the amount of communication that we had to do with our stakeholders so this was namely around um, just departments, just like the departments that had these number of sites, we'd sort of group them up uh, and enable the service with them and uh, give, provide them with some communication on how to use the purge service and what was happening uh, and some of the cache rules as well. Um, benefits realization. Okay, obviously the biggest one here is um, it's been something that the customer has been asking for for a long time. Um, so a happy customer. Um, that was the main thing. Um, we reduced the number, we have reduced the number of support requests, people manually um, submitting requests to have content purged. Sometimes these things are time critical, coincide with like ministerial briefs or um, uh, advertising campaigns. Um, things need to be sort of uh, purged pretty quickly uh, and have that content made available. Um, minimizes the wait time uh, for uh, content to be purged. It's pretty quick, it's pretty efficient. Um, but then it, uh, it also opens the door to um, optimize up um, cache performance. So at the moment, a lot of our content, we've got, it's, it's not just one set of rules, it's a number of rules, but basically content is cached for 15 minutes, um, but where a static assets like images, PDF files, and that sort of stuff, they're like one day. Um, but you can start to sort of extend that cache because your, your, your cache, sorry, the cache content is being purged on demand. Um, so you can increase the cache lifetime. So we've got a bit of work going on at the moment where we've increased it to a month with a couple of sites and we're looking to in increase that even further depending on how that trial goes and, and exploring uh, making that, that change available to all sites. Um, but uh, yeah, that's, that's really where, where we're heading. Uh, so yeah, so moving for forward, um, 
as I said, this is kind of the purge services available to PaaS customers at the moment. Sorry, SaaS customers. Um, we're looking at making it available for uh, PaaS customers, but there are a few obstacles that we need to look at. You know, there's service expectations around that, um, and you know, uh, any sort of technical complexities around uh, any conflicts with the service and how that would would work. Um, service enhancements. What can we do better? How can we improve that? Maybe visualization. Make it make so, so people can see what's happening. Um, can we, uh, you know. Um, make better use of the keys, uh, uh, change the rules with caching, um, reporting improvements, um, yeah, visibility of what's happening, what's going on, what, what the uh, administrators of the service uh, can see, uh, making it meaningful. Um, and this is kind of a bit of a, um, an area that I like to talk about, but um, with reporting it should be meaningful and it should be about um, presenting information that helps to influence decisions. Don't just like go and report something because it looks good and um, and, it's, and it, it displays information, that information should uh, be meaningful, should help to influence the decision. So well, I'm, I'm, when I'm looking at that information, I know what that means and I know what, what, it, what I need to do when I see that information. Um, that's my presentation for today. Thank you very much for listening to me. Are there any questions?